Hello, welcome to Biogrades TV. If you're new here, please subscribe and turn on the notification so you don't miss our next video. How Cameroon Got Independence There was a considerable activity in Cameroon by British and American missionaries in the early 19th century. But Germany established a strong presence only when the Wehrmann Company of Hamburg built a warehouse on the mouth of the Walry River in 1868. Other German traders began to come into the region in their numbers, so much so that they sent a message back home requesting for the appointment of a consul. In 1884, the requests were answered when Otto von Bismarck, the Chancellor of Germany, decided to establish a German empire in Africa. That same year, Gustav Nachigol arrived in Cameroon and made a treaty with one of the local kings and to annex the region for the German Chancellor. A consul was appointed later that year and a governor the following year. The annexation did not come without its troubles. Some of the chiefs that were not party to the treaty invaded the village of their colleague who signed the treaty, tearing down the German flag there. Unfortunately for them, the German warship was in the vicinity. The German soldiers descended heavily on the chiefs and their men in a reprisal. Under German colonial leadership, massive investments were made in Cameroon to facilitate commercial activities for the profit of Germany. Forced labor were deployed in plantations for rubber, banana, palm oil and cocoa. Railway projects were begun to link major areas within the region. However, Germany's colonial rule was brought to a sharp end during the First World War when the last German fort in Cameroon surrendered to the British forces in February of 1916. After the war, the colony was shared between the United Kingdom and France, with France taking the larger share of what became French Cameroons. Cameroon got a new colonial master but nothing new in terms of their welfare or treatment. Although it was not called a colony but a French trust territory under the United Nations trusteeship, they continued to be oppressed and forced to work in ventures that profited only their French masters. With time, calls for independence began. The Union de Syndica Confédéré du Cameroun, which was a trade union movement, embarked on a strike in September 1945 and the colonial government answered with extreme cruelty, shooting striking workers dead. This taught the trade union leaders that they needed a different structure for their struggle. A new movement was formed called Rassemblement Camerounais RACAM, but the colonial government also declared this movement illegal in 1947. Unwilling to give up, Founders of RACAM then formed the Union of the Populations of Cameroon UPC, on the 10th of April 1948. This was the first indigenous nationalist party in Cameroon and it was headed by Ruben Om Nyobe. Ruben Om Nyobe was a gifted speaker and very passionate about the liberation of Cameroon from colonial rule. He appeared before the UN General Assembly in various years including 1952, 1953 and 1954 as the spokesperson of the anti-colonial movement in Cameroon. Later in 1955, riots broke out in several cities across the colony following the arrest of independence activists. Hundreds of people died and the UPC was banned. More activists were arrested, numbering up to 800, many of whom were severely beaten while in prison. Many others with the police on their heels fled and took refuge in forests. So brutal was France's repression that it was denounced at the UN by representative countries like the Soviet Union, India and Syria. Prominent personalities like Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana and Gama Abdel Nasser of Egypt showed their support for the UPC. Later in 1956, a revolt broke among the Basa people and several anti-UPC figures were kidnapped or murdered. Bridges, telephone lines and other infrastructure were sabotaged. As the French government tried to repress these incidents, more resistance units were formed and began guerrilla warfare. To isolate the rebellion from the Basa civilian population, 
who were suspected of being particularly pro-independence, they were forced to camps along the main roads where they walked, constructing roads. Their huts and crops were raised with fire. The charismatic leader of the UPC, Robert Om Nyobe, was later killed by the French forces on September 13, 1958, near his village of Bomyebe. After several violent agitations and diplomatic efforts, on the 19th of October 1958, France recognized the right of her United Nations Trust territory to choose to be independent. On the 24th of October 1958, the Legislative Assembly of French Cameroon declared the desire of the Cameroonians to see their country granted full independence on January 1, 1960. It urged the government of French Cameroon to ask France to inform the General Assembly of the United Nations to annul the trusteeship accord and grant independence to French Cameroon. On the 12th of November 1958, the government of France asked the United Nations to grant the request of French Cameroonians since they have already been given full internal autonomy. And so, on the 5th of December 1958, the United Nations General Assembly decided that Cameroon, which was under French administration, would gain independence on the 1st of January 1960, given the French government's declaration. And so it happened that Cameroon became an independent nation with Amado Ahijo as its first president. What have we missed out on this history? Let's know in the comment section. Will it be ridiculous to subscribe to our channel? If no, please like this video, share and subscribe to our channel.